in my myself, I used to be really depressed in my um, my teens and for most of my twenties. And then I recognised at one point that I had a choice to either stay being depressed or let go of depression. And I recognised that it was my choice to make. And I made the choice to not be depressed. And I sought out ways to find out how to develop the skills to not be depressed. And the, the primary ones to actually make the decision that I didn't want to be depressed. And what I learned was to actually control my, uh, my belief systems around that, that I wasn't good enough and that I kept uh, being self-critical about myself. Look at you, you're pathetic, who would ever love you? You're not worthy to be loved, you know? And so um, I learned to not do that. And I, I learned to, to love myself and to, but ultimately it was, it was the decision that I needed to make to learn to love myself. And so if situations come along where I am down on myself, I actually bring myself back to centre. It's all about being in alignment with the choice that you make. If, you make. if I make the choice to not be depressed, I have to bring myself into alignment to support the belief and the view and the self-projection that I am totally capable of being loved and loving myself. I want to show you a practice that's really helpful for you to come into alignment with being safe, with being in um, control of a different way of being in yourself. And it's a fully embodied practice. So you actually feel it in all the cells of your body, is, it becomes very real. And this is something that I use a lot, I've used a lot and taught a lot of people to do. And it's really the, it's, uh, the practice of the spiritual warrior. So a warrior is not really sort of a warrior in the, the pugilistic sense, in the military sense. The spiritual warrior, and I've got this crystal here, uh, which is my spiritual warrior crystal, it's, uh, it's being in the heart. The spiritual warrior is one who has, has an open heart. A lot, a lot of us are afraid of vulnerability, like, so it's something that to fear. Oh, I, I, you know, I can't do that, I'm too vulnerable. Well, vulnerability is actually a beautiful thing. It's, it's a heart-opening, expansive experience. And a lot of uh, experiences in our life through uh, being brokenhearted, through not feeling safe, has caused us to put walls up around our hearts and protection around our hearts. And so it's very difficult to feel love, to feel love from another, feel love from ourselves. And, and oftentimes, as, as I speak to many parents, it's a lot easier for them to love their children than it is to love themselves. And I understand that because there's a lot of protection around it, around the heart, to help us to feel safe. It's a coping mechanism. The spiritual warrior is one that is helping to release the walls, to recognise that vulnerability is actually a beautiful asset, to go fully into vulnerability. So what happens is uh, in life, you know, because we have experienced a you know, broken heart or maybe not uh, experiencing what it's like to be loved by our parents fully in the way that you deserve to be loved as a child, uh, we become victims. And so what happens is that the posture, I'll show you what the posture looks like, and the, of the victim, I'm sort of exaggerating it a little bit, but it's, it's a forward roll and the shoulders come forward and sort of the head goes down. So like this, I'm, I'm sort of exaggerating, any, any sort of short step, heavy steps, and really it feels like you're carrying a lot of baggage, you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, which actually you, you are in a way, you're carrying a lot of additional energy on your shoulders uh, of, that causes you to have the, the, the victim mentality. And it's uh, other people's negative thought forms, other people's angers, other people's fears, usually your parents as a kid, and, and your, or your you know, partner, husband or wife. Sort of puts all their projections on you, even somebody else's road rage, and it feels really heavy. It's been described as like a 40 pound sack of potatoes on your back. And so, you, this is the position you take. And it, what's that doing is it's rolling protection around your heart. So, it's really hard to, to be sort of open hearted or even want to feel vulner, uh, vulnerability when you've got so much protection and so much baggage. So, first of all, you have to release that. Um, stuff off your shoulders so you can you know I, I do that for clients um, very effectively I must say um, but you can also smudge 
keep staying out in the, in, the, in the full moon or the sun, have the sun or the full moon, or you know, have a tree taken off. Trees are really incredible at taking off this dense energy. Asking the tree to do it, and then, then making, it's important to make an offering to the tree, a tobacco or even a kiss or, or a hug or something, an offering to the tree for taking off this energy. So taking off this energy, shaking it out. Actually, body, body movement's also a really be beautiful thing to help to release some of these dense energies. You shake it off that energy, sm smudging it. You say, use, use a feather to take it off. Amazing feather that I use for releasing energy off myself, also over others. So smudging, letting go of that energy. I let it go. I free myself of that dense energy. And then changing the posture. So from slumping forward with your head down, lifting your chin up, sitting upright. I like to have my hands in sort of slightly a slightly clenched fist and either have them on my knees or by my side and chin up chest open so what you're doing is you're pulling your shoulders back and you're opening your heart so just in that very process of opening your heart you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable I bring it in I, I, I bring it all I bring it all but you're in a, it's with straight back you're being very solid now the next step is really the most powerful one is to, to close your eyes and to imagine the warrior so i like to use uh, an image of a, a particular figure that came to me when i first started doing shamanic uh, journeying work that showed himself to me and he's actually a, for some reason a native american even though i have no uh, native american blood he came to me as a native american bare-chested Native American just sort of wearing a, a leather loincloth and he is my warrior so if ever I'm feeling sort of a little bit down in the dumps or defeated or unsafe I call him in and he actually steps into me it's known as shape-shifting and so what, what I recommend is that you you, you maybe uh, have an image that you that you want to work with it's just an imaginary image or you, or you can look through the internet or books of a warrior, strong warrior, medicine man, man or woman, that you can create that image for yourself, or you can do shamanic journeying work. We could, maybe I could do, I could do a, a video on helping you to locate that that what spiritual warrior that is your own unique spiritual warrior, and you become it. You know, you, he has a crystal around his chest. In my case, is a strong man, and he's fearless. He can't see where he's going. He's in, in, in my image, he's, he's canoeing through fog. Uh, he doesn't know where he's going, but he's very purposeful. He's not, the fact that he can't see where he's going is irrelevant because his confidence is so strong. His courage is so strong. His sense of purpose is so strong, he keeps going. And I, I, I feel him in me. He comes into me. And you, and you, you notice that when you can f fully embody it, there is this physiological shift that happens where I become him. I, I become more proud and courageous and loving and fearless. And it, it takes a little bit of practice initially, but now I just, I just click it in. I just click, click him in and he is, he is here with me. And I, you know, walking the dog or walking the land uh, in the area that I live, I, I, I do that. I sort of walk with a little bit of a purposeful stride. I become the warrior. And, and you can become whatever you want because, the, let me tell you, the victim, you are just creating that in your own imagination. You're not really a victim. Just a lot of the circumstances of your life has impressed on you the belief that you are a victim. Maybe. <laughs> and you can change that around by calling in uh, a res the resources that there are in the unseen world with it within yourself whether you're completely making it up or whether it's actually a real energy from outside is irrelevant it's what you believe and it's, it's the connection that you have with it and that you're walking down the street with an open heart loving it loving yourself and being proud of yourself and that's, that's one of the ways that I learned to let go of any limiting belief that I used to have in myself and if I start to develop them now, because I'm also a human being, 
experiencing human emotions, it's really important to validate that uh, and to embody it and to fully embody all the experiences that it is to, to be human. Uh, a lot of people, I know in the area that I live, there's a lot of spiritual bypassing that happens because it's too painful to, to experience a full human emotion and condition. And so, you know, spiritual bypassing is an addiction like any other addiction, like alcoholism or, or drug addiction, um, because it's denying the fact that, that you have these experiences, it's too painful to deal with them. So to escape them, whether it's through drugs or alcohol or uh, spiritual bypassing, to, to bring yourself fully into the body, to experience your full humanness, but in a different way, in, in a, a humanness that is more expansive and loving towards yourself, because that's where the work begins. So to be the spiritual warrior, to sit upright, to be strong and to be proud and to be fearless and to be completely safe is the, really the beauty of this work and to, uh, to hold that in your heart and to share it with others. The things that I work with, you know, staffs and things like that, you can use, um, you can use sticks even. I work with, I do shamanic work, I work with staffs. And to hold these, to hold crystals, um, ah, these are scepters. One other thing that I do is like, Make, make a sound when I turn on this. Hey! Hey! I'm a warrior. Hey! And that resonance is very powerful, works for me. You can come up with your own sound. Hey! Hey! Yeah! Ha! 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 So have fun with that. Um, it's a beautiful way to change your reality from fear to love. Much love to you, see you next time.